why the microplastics crisis will only get worse. Let's check it out, people. And drink is wrapped in plastic. In fact, global plastic production more than doubled between 2000 and 2022. And now we're realizing it's showing up in our bodies too. One recent study showed the level of microplastics in the frontal cortex of our brains increased by about 50% between 2016 and 2024. You cannot take the current exposure levels to plastic and say, let's double them in the human race and just see what happens. I mean, that's just idiotic. The problem is that plastic never fully decomposes. It just breaks down into smaller and smaller pieces. When it becomes smaller than five millimeters, that's about the width of a pencil eraser. It's called a microplastic. But then a subset called nanoplastics can get much, much smaller. So small that they can't even be seen with the human eye. There has been increasing chronic disease. We know that some of that is from many of these chemicals that are used in plastics. Plastic is in some ways an amazing material. It has this amazing breadth of uses that makes it a very valuable material. It also happens to be very inexpensive. It's cheap to make. And it has long been inexpensive, but has become even cheaper to make more recently. And when you combine inexpensive with very useful, you're going to have a lot of demand for this product. Plastic production is a big industry, $880 billion, in fact. And as big oil faces weakened demand for gasoline, it's increasingly turned to plastic. Aside from the already massive plastic waste problem that the world is facing, it's now in our bodies. And with more research emerging that shows its harm on our health, why is plastic production increasing? And who's reaping the benefits from it? In that study about plastic in our brains, researchers at the University of New Mexico studied samples from cadavers. Based on those samples, they calculated that the total mass of plastic from the 2024 brains they evaluated would equate to about seven grams, about the size of a plastic spoon. Tracy Woodruff wasn't involved in the brain study, but is a microplastics researcher. She's evaluated thousands of studies on this topic. We're able to conclude based on those studies that microplastics are suspected to adversely impact reproductive health, respiratory health, and effects on the digestive system, and that the, the links to these mechanisms that we saw could also could increase the risk of colon cancer and lung cancer. Almost every single thing we buy from the grocery store comes wrapped in plastic, which sheds microscopic particles onto our food. It's also contaminated our food chains. Researchers found that 99% of the fish they studied off the coast of Oregon were found to contain microplastics in their muscle tissue. It's been found to be released in our mouths from simply chewing a piece of gum. Researchers have even found them in fruits and vegetables. As humans, we are becoming part plastic. That is the reality, right? So thinking about that is <clears throat> thinking about that is really crazy. Um, I don't know what people are going to do, what we are going to do, but yeah, this is this is wild. That's what I'm saying. Honestly, it's about to get to that own point where you better start growing your own food, man. Seriously. We're really getting close to that point. Um, I will be, <clears throat> I will be planning to do this in the future. Um, obviously, I can't afford to get all that done now. And plastic has over sixteen thousand chemicals. We have only, you know, had studies and research that has about a quarter of them documented as harmful. But we just haven't had the time and resources to explore how these other chemicals may be impacting us. While there is definitive research to prove microplastics are inside of us, the exact effects on our bodies is difficult to pinpoint. Many studies have found a correlation between microplastics and chronic disease, but cannot establish a causation. For example, the study on our brains analyzed samples of people with dementia and found much higher levels of microplastic in them compared to the brains without the disease. There are, of course, many other lifestyle or genetic factors that could have caused dementia. On its website, the FDA reiterates the lack of causality by saying, current scientific evidence does not demonstrate that the level of microplastics or nanoplastics detected in our foods pose a risk to They're always going to say health. that, you know, but who knows what this will end up doing in the future. And most likely it's going to have negative effects. We'll just have to see. Consider 
microplastics to be sort of a toxic delivery mechanism. All the chemicals that are attached to the plastic that make up the plastic, that soften the plastic or that block UV light or do all the things that give it its characteristics that make it so versatile, a lot of those are pretty toxic substances. Petrochemicals, the building blocks of plastic, are produced from oil and gas. It's a small but profitable area of the fossil fuel industry. In the U.S., only about 1.5% of natural gas is converted into chemicals that are used to make plastic and other consumer products. But as oil demand declines from EV adoption, U.S. tariffs, and a slowing of economic growth in India and China, industry giants are investing heavily into chemical production. Renewables are coming in very inexpensively, and so renewables are actually on the margin cutting or reducing the amount of additional natural gas that would have been built otherwise. Plastic production is projected to grow more than 40 percent between 2025 and 2040. In its 2024 outlook, British Petroleum, or BP, said the declining use of oil in road transport over the first half of the outlook is offset by the increasing use of oil as a feedstock, especially in the petrochemical sector, as rising prosperity boosts consumption of plastics, textiles, and other oil-based materials. ExxonMobil and Shell made over $110 billion in combined revenue from their chemical businesses in 2024. Plastics is the growth area. They know how to do it. I think they the already... smartest thing people can do is just start moving away from plastic into glass. Um, I myself need to do this, but I'll be honest, I've been preoccupied with so much other crap. It's just like, who has time to do... Not, I mean, not that saying I don't have time, but it's like, dude, they're attacking us so many ways. It's like, who has the time to sit here and look for everything that they're doing and try to combat everything. It's like, it's almost impossible. Have access to the gas that you need to make plastics. They're not constrained at all by what happens to people. They don't care about that. They just see this as, okay, what do, what do my shareholders need? How am I gonna make a ton of money? We have recycled 80 million pounds of plastic that otherwise would have gone to uh, landfills. And we have plans to ramp that recycling up to a billion pounds by 2027. In 2020, Saudi Aramco, the biggest oil company in the world, bought a 70% stake in petrochemical company Sabic. While fourth quarter 2024 results were lower than expected, Sabic made nearly $35 billion from petrochemicals last year. Sabic and Exxon are two of the largest players in the polyethylene plastics industry. I think that the oil and gas majors all see a major opportunity. They've been investing very heavily uh, billions of dollars into building plastic producing facilities. So when they're losing some of their profit center or expect to be losing some of their core profit centers, this is a place where they might be able to make up some of that lost profit. Fracking has made the U.S. into the world's biggest oil producer, pumping out nearly 13.5 million barrels per day. And a global surplus of oil and particularly natural gas means more plastic production. The bottom line is that it's really coming from the fact that we have so much natural gas and plenty of ethane, and it's pretty easy to get that ethane. So that the the actual uh, feedstock, if you will, so that what's used to create plastics is really cheap in the United States. With widespread investments in plastics growth, the market is becoming highly oversaturated. The margins on chemicals are compressing, and plastic supply is projected to increasingly outpace demand. Shell, for example, felt that firsthand in its most recent quarter. This isn't about we need more plastic. This is about them pushing more plastic on us because they're looking for new markets for their products. And I think one of the concerns that people have is that once they put in all this infrastructure, because it's expensive, right? You have to build a facility and all the, the mechanisms for If you for really think about how much stuff is wrapped in plastic, it's literally absurd. I think the only way you could really, like I said, get away from all this is if you have your own chickens, your own cows, and like your own vegetables. But even then, to some degree, it's still not going to be fresh. Well, it's going to be fresh, but it's still going to have like some, like, some chemical in it because the soil, where you get all the stuff from, so, but it'll be a lot healthier it from the ground to the product, it's going to be really hard to roll that back. We see it
Plastic was first created in the early 1900s. As well as the development of new man-made plastics and fabrics. But wide-scale production didn't ramp up until the 50s. The public was sold on the notion of disposability, but over the following decades, began waking up to the pollution crisis it was creating. There were all sorts of efforts in the 1970s and 80s and even in the 90s to ban plastic bags or to ban plastics in general. And that is really what was at the root of the industry's pivot to recycling, because they saw recycling as a way to deflect and defend against those efforts to ban their products. A report by the Center for Climate Integrity alleges that the plastics industry spent years making, quote, performative investments and would roll back research initiatives or quietly shut down facilities when regulatory threats simmered. Just last year, the Attorney General of California sued ExxonMobil over a decades-long campaign of recycling deception. If the public was convinced that uh, their single-use throwaway consumer lifestyle uh, was supported by recycling and that it was environmentally friendly, they would buy more and more and more, and it would drive the profits of ExxonMobil up, up and up. And so that's the idea, but it's based on a lie. It's illegal. We've sued them in court, and we're here uh, to hold them accountable. Within two months of the lawsuit, Exxon announced a commitment to invest $200 million in boosting recycling capacity in its Texas plant. In January 2025, ExxonMobil countersued the California AG and other environmental groups for defaming and disparaging the company's recycling initiatives. We've seen this growing trend where activists and ideologues, particularly in the climate space, and then some politicians, particularly state attorneys, the truth is, we, we do need some level of plastic, but everything can't just be plastic, you know? It seems like everywhere you go, no matter what, it's filled in some plastic. And then you, I just feel like, dude, right? Like, everything in the world has gone down in quality by like 10%. Which doesn't sound too horrible, but if you really think about everything going down in quality in 10%, that is a lot. You know, and it's probably even more than that. Um, I just think now we're really seeing the effects of all their BS. Generals are hijacking and abusing uh, legitimate processes to advance their own selfish agendas. I think that was certainly true with uh, the State Attorney General uh, Rob Bonta. He was uh, lying, uh, lying about our company, lying about our technology, impugning the character of our people, interfering with our business, and probably most importantly, getting in the way of improving the environment. I don't think anybody really was quite aware of the depth of the fraud that the industry was perpetrating on the public. I mean, they knew from the beginning that the economics of plastic recycling would never work. Only about 9% of plastic waste worldwide was recycled in 2019. In the US, that number's even lower, at 5%. So why aren't more plastics being recycled? It's a complicated uh, chain. There is a problem with collecting and, and sorting and processing the plastics. There is a, uh, the current recycling technology has its limits. The plastic today is not a simple uh, single element of plastic. There are very complicated structures to achieve the properties that we're looking for in the use of plastic. And so many of those properties make them inconsistent for mechanical recycling. It is simply cheaper to make new plastic than to recycle, especially considering the abundance of gas and oil. There are no incentives for a company to, to, to switch out of plastics. There are no incentives for a company to use recycled plastics. Uh, it's more expensive. Uh, the only incentive they have is that many companies want to be socially responsible. Political backing has also been instrumental in making all of this possible. While U.S. Secretary of Health and Human Services, RFK Jr., has said reassessing the levels of chemicals and plastic in our food is a priority, the Trump administration as a whole has taken a pro-plastic stance by aggressively deregulating the energy industry. It's cutting incentives for renewables and opening federal lands for more oil and gas drilling. This push for more drilling comes despite the fact that the U.S. is already producing a surplus current deregulatory efforts by the current federal government in the United States, giving less to worry about for the business executives in the oil and gas industry uh, relating to plastics. And so I don't anticipate there's going to be any regulation on plastics in the next few years. Between 2014 and 2024, the oil and gas industry spent over 
I don't know, man. I feel like a lot of this... I don't know. I feel like they're not saying... A, I mean, they're saying a whole lot, but they're not saying a whole lot. I just feel like... Um, you'll never get any real answer out of these people. So let me just... Basically, once again, we're gonna... <clears throat> we the American people, or we the, the world people, we need to start really taking a look at what we're buying. Myself included, I keep, I, you know, I, I buy a lot of stuff too myself, but we're gonna have to slow down, man. This is what it's leading us to, because it's too unhealthy. Plastic Treaty provides a unique opportunity to mobilize global action to tackle plastic pollution by creating an effective and sustainable plastic circular economy while supporting an inclusive transition for all stakeholders. Sorry to interrupt, but this is important. The shooter who murdered my sweet little Daniel brought a highly lethal weapon. While it is impossible to avoid entirely, the good news is there are a few realistic ways to reduce your exposure to microplastics. Cutting out plastic water bottles is one major step everyone can take. There are hundreds of thousands of microplastics floating around in every liter of bottled water. We know that from empirically based studies that you can reduce your exposures to these uh, chemicals that are found in plastic that we know are toxic. So by extrapolation, you can also re reduce your exposures to microplastics. And so some of them are and some of them are really super easy, like don't microwave in plastic. That's a really easy one. A 2023 study found that microwaving plastic caused the highest release of microplastics into food compared to other usages, like storing it in the refrigerator or at room temperature. No one's talking about getting rid of heart valves or, you know, no one's talking about getting rid of essential uses of plastic, like plastics in your car dashboard or whatever it is. What we're talking about is plastics that are single use, plastics that are completely unnecessary, plastics where, you know, you don't have to individually wrap like every leaf of lettuce, which it seems to be where we're headed with this stuff. We're unquestionably as a society better. Can't say I'm shocked. Welcome to America. Welcome to the world. But like you said, we can we can do something about it. Um, and that's the best part. All we got to do and start being conscious and maybe it'll get better. Peace.